How are you guys doing tonight, Hartford? <laughs> Manchester, whatever this is. My you guys don't sound too excited yet. Let's see if we can change that. I have not performed in this club in the last five years. It's my first time back in five years. I'm excited. I've been doing some weird shows lately. I put an ad on Craigslist last Christmas. Okay, to hire a local comic for private parties and get-togethers. And I got a phone call December 13th from a guy. I was like, hey, I have a private party in my house for me and nine of my friends. What do you charge for an hour's worth of comedy? I was like, like 200 bucks, give or take. It's kind of, you know, holiday season. That's great. Let you know up front. We're all homosexual. That's got weird. <laughs> like, it's still 200 bucks for the hour, man. I don't care what your orientation is. He goes, no, no, no. I just want to see how you handled that. I just want a comic to come in the house for the party, tell a few jokes, break the ice. And while you're telling jokes, we're going to be getting naked. <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's a dick out in the room. The ice has already been broken. Like, <laughs> you don't need me standing there pointing at it and making fun of me, because I will. So December 20th, there I am in this guy's house, right? Look, it's Christmas, I needed the money. <laughs> this dude was loaded, okay? The place where I was performing was the size of the stage. It was a fireplace. Right? And every comic has an opening line they hope to say to get a good laugh to start the show. My friend of mine was like, Travis, when you're in front of these ten guys, say this one line and you'll kill it. So there's me, ten gay dudes in a sectional. First thing out of my mouth is, hey, I just popped two Viagra. Who's hungry? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Obviously not you, sir. Your mouth is full. <laughs> But those are like, that's not funny. I'm not making fun of them. I didn't care that they were gay, not one bit. I don't care who you have sex with. As long as you smile when you're finished, it should be all that matters. <laughs> you're like, I shouldn't have done that. Don't fucking do it again. Because <laughs> I realized a long time ago that I could never be gay myself. Dude, one simple fact is, uh, I don't wipe my ass good enough to be gay. <laughs> no? <laughs> don't grow that shit. Yay me! Yes! Yes. Ah. Yeah, yeah, fuck it, it's nasty. <laughs> it's just a joke. I do wash my ass. Uh. <laughs> hey, what is it about somebody that walks past you that has fucked up teeth? That uh, makes you rub your tongue across your teeth and make sure your shit's still straight? <laughs> shopping over here at this Target, and uh, on the way out of this Target, after I purchased my stuff, something caught the corner of my eye. It was my original, like, thought process told me it was like a life-size action figure. It turned out to be a uh, midget security guard. That didn't bother me as much as the thought is, where do you buy a midget security guard uniform? Alright? So I asked her, and uh, she told me she went to Build-A-Bear. I'm also a nurse, firefighter. <laughs> you guys aren't laughing like there's a group full of bitches and they're going to attack everybody. It's like, ah! Oh! Keep doing this shit. <laughs> I love doing this shit, man. Just look, like, when I go out in public, I like messing with people to entertain myself. And I'm going to share some things that I do in public that you guys can also do to entertain yourselves. The first one's easy. Go to your little costume shop and rent a Godzilla costume. All right? Go home, put it on, then order Chinese food. <laughs> yeah. You see someone with a surprised face, like, what the fuck? Here's a good one. Uh, the next time you're in a public bathroom and someone sits down in the stall next to you, crawl under their stall and go, What's in your wallet? <laughs> All right. This is my favorite one. This is for the guys only, yeah. guys. Next time you go to a hotel, okay, go downstairs in the robe they'll provide for you, hold the robe shut with one hand like this, and have the other hand full of lotion. 
walk up to the front counter girl and go, why'd my movie stop? And under, anybody have young kids in here? Yeah. Fuck me, I'm the only one. You guys have kids. <laughs> nice. Look, I have a five year old son. His name's Colton. I love him to death, but I don't understand it if it's a kid thing, if everyone who has kids goes through this process. But uh, my son would not stop trying to stare at my nuts. <laughs> Maybe I can just dangle him out there, but he eats me. <laughs> Fuck, that's weird too. Uh, like, no, if I mean, I get in my bedroom, the door shut, all of a sudden, there he is behind the curtains and shit. I'm like, dude, what are you doing? He, like, runs away. The other day, I was in the shower, okay? I was washing my hair, and I had my hair tipped back like this, rinsing it off. When I pulled forward, there he was, shower curtain open, just staring at my nuts. I said, dude, what the fuck are you doing, buddy? He goes, uh, mama went to Pepsi. I'm like, this isn't the kitchen, you little pervert. Get the fuck. What are you doing? Okay. That's, that, that's not bad enough. What if I was pleasuring myself, okay? It's a shower, this shit happens. I open my eyes, and still do. I shoot a load in my kid's face. All right, look. Oh, it's not your kid. That's true. <laughs> That's traumatizing for a child. <laughs> he goes to school the next day, has a story to tell his friends. It's like, hey, guess what? My dad shoots glue. It's like, what? <laughs> It's okay to laugh. I didn't really come in my kid's face. God, it's all right. I'm gonna try this one. He uh, this one could go this one. Um, he's a kindergarten now, right? He came home from school back in February and he goes, "Hey, Dad, uh, do you know who Martin Luther is?" It's like, sure do, buddy. I was like, is that what you learned about? He goes, yeah. Do you know that he was king of the blacks? I went, no. No, he wasn't. His name was Martin Luther King Jr. No, he was king of the blacks. I'm like, where the fuck did I enroll you in school? Pre-KKK? Because this is not. Thank you for those who laugh, because look, I don't know if he's being a little racist or I'm just talking about sleep too much, because that's fucking, all right, fuck, went too far. I'm not fucking. I was going to try it. That's, a, that's a kind of a touchy joke for a five-year-old, but. Ah, uh, let's see. Let's switch off of that. I got more. He calls Donald Trump Bottom Trump, which I think is funny. I'm like, you know something I don't know, buddy? Oh, fuck, good. I, uh... Let's do this one. Got a bunch of them going through my head. Um, has anybody here ever had somebody come up to you and tell you something extremely gross and personal about their life that you didn't want to know? They just kind of offer it up. I had a woman come to me a couple months ago, hey Travis, uh, do you know that last year I had a dermoid cut off of my ovary? I was like, what? What's a dermoid? Oh, it's a uh, tumor-like cyst that develops in a woman's ovary that grows hair and teeth. <sighs> you next. Fuck, that's nasty. My microphone cut out when I said nasty bitch. That was the part you didn't hear. Uh, but uh, I tried to act concerned for her. So how did you find out you had this thing? She goes, oh, well, my gynecologist found it. I said, what did it do, bite his finger? <laughs> Look. I've told that joke in a lot of different cities. I did that joke in Huntington, West Virginia. All right. Oh, <laughs> Not that bad. It's pretty nice. Uh... Then I joined Huntington, West Virginia, at the end of the show, tried to imagine the most stereotypical West Virginia woman you can possibly dream of. Walked up to me at the end of the show and was like, Hey, did you know I had one of those things cut off me my sixth birth count I mean, yesterday? And I was like, oh, is that where your teeth went? <laughs> All right, one more and I'm out of here. Look, look at me, guys. It's no big secret. It's no big secret. I'm a pretty big dude. But in the last six months, I've lost 35 pounds working out, so give it up for me. <laughs> I kind of got tired of hearing my tits flap when I wash dishes. <laughs> what? It's like every time I wash, I was like, yeah, wash that cups. 
No, but look, there's a time in a big person's life and they realize they're getting too big. Mine came to me one evening when I got out of the shower and I bent over to dry off my feet. As I stood back up, my ass crept with the shower curtain off the wall. <laughs> Listen, that's my name's 